بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد the business model of the internet is monitoring surveillance in harnessing your data So people have not understood the destructive nature and what they get in into when they go onto these platforms and as a believer we need to take precaution more worse than weapons grade plutonium is your electronic personal data once it has leaked there's no getting back so your data when there is a point to any of these companies they will sell it leak it lose it or get hacked there's no exceptions to the rule somebody logs on to facebook and considers themselves a customer of facebook you're not a customer you're the product you the experiment you the guinea pig so whether it's the coming of the jal and your information is available which will be used against you or these different gadgets which they have access to and will be used against you or even on din overnight certain countries muslims were targeted just because they said la ilaha illa allah i believe in one allah and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was his final messenger Yesterday they were brothers today murderers So the pages of history are filled with situations where overnight the table turned We shouldn't wait for that to happen and then do something about it If it's not deen it can be on other factors they say a certain nationality a certain ethnicity certain background we never know when the tides may change so the corn is on and we need to see through it we shouldn't be blind we shouldn't get caught some people feel if they're not on these platforms they don't exist i uh, i are you particular about being on the platforms of the creation or the creator so don't wait for when it's too late like a father who gave his 3 year old son for the first time some pocket money so he said i'll give you 2 dollars a week you save them up once you save them up put them in the yellow box when you've got 5 i will swap them for $10 then you can put it in the blue box and you've got five of those i will swap them for $50 and you can put them in the red box this is a red box so you did that for 12 years until he was big enough to realize that the red box was the gas meter the red box was the gas meter So you put in put in making sacrifice and you realize it's all a con so before it's too late we need to wake up and realize and does care entails this evil of gossip this evil of deception and breach in people's privacy has become in vogue So these are the platforms like so ourselves as well we shouldn't be partisan to this year 
before people would physically come to you now they are just forwarding a forward upon a forward Al-Ibn Ajr al-Haythami in his book Az-Zawajir and Iqtiraf al-Kabair has mentioned that when you hear some of this accusations, this gossip, somebody comes to you and said uh, he's doing this, he's planning this, he said this about you, then number one, don't believe it. Because a person who spreads namima, carries tales, he's a fasik. In Ja'akum Fasik, Quran speaks clear. He's a Fasik, he's an evil person, he's a deceptive person, he's a liar. So you'll have regrets. So don't believe him, number one. Number two, warn him not to repeat this action. I don't want to hear, I don't want to know. Thirdly, if he does not repent, then man ahabba lillah wa bghada lillah. You should show your disregard and your anger with the action that he had done. Hate for Allah. Number four, he made a story. So whoever he's speaking about, don't think bad about that person. Don't harbor any ill thoughts. So don't even consider whether he did it or he didn't do it. Number five, Since you hear this, now you shouldn't start spying on others, looking for their faults. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ijtanibu kathiram min al-dhan. Avoid suspicion. Inna ba'wa al-dhanni ithm. Suspicion can be a sin, a guna. So we shouldn't be affected by his words. And number six, this information that has come to you, do not pass it on. So, if you have approved, you have accepted, then you're going to forward it, you're going to tell others about it, then you'll be partisan to the gossip, to the backbiting, to the caring tales. So, you told somebody not to do it, but you, 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 you retransmitted the information. Suleiman bin Abdul Malik rebuked somebody who had spread some tales about him. And uh, Imam Zuhri was here in his presence. So the man, we denied it. He said, I didn't. Suleiman told him, the one who told me about you does not tell lies. He told me that you said this and this. So he took him to task. So the person denied it. So uh, when he denied it, he said he does not tell lies. So I believe him, the informant. So Imam Zuhri said, the person who spreads Namima, who carries tales, who gossips, he cannot be truthful. So Suleiman heard this and said, you're right. Leave him, let him go. So the person who came to give you this information, don't believe him in the first place. Hassan used to say, Rahimullah, the person who, who says, uh, speaks namima, carries tales, gossip, he's going to speak bad about you one day. So the person who carries tales and gossips should not be trusted ever. He should be hated because he's lying, backbiting, slandering, betraying, deceiving, spreading mischief, causing fitna. And uh, Allah is encouraged to join ties, to create unity. He's the one who's severe in ties. And Allah has commanded us not to spread mischief on earth and He's called causing mischief. إِنَّمَا السَّبِيلُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ يَظْلِمُونَ النَّاسِ وَيَبْغُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ So, the way of blame is against those people who oppress men. 
and rebel on earth without justification for them will be torment and a severe punishment so we should be very weary about this moving to home security all these platforms that are out there a person can compromise themselves their family their location their their important information it can have serious consequences and social media these very platforms of of backbiting of gossip of slandering of carrying tales of betrayal of deception of lying of cheating of spying so one is others are doing it one is you shouldn't allow others to take advantage that's why these points are being discussed like we discussed when you go for holiday there's protocols to see there's no secret recorders no cameras etc don't allow yourself to be exploited so facebook as well when a person logs out then uh, they don't give you information so it's like uh, a blackmail besides that there's trackers for monitoring your activities even after a person has logged out of the facebook platform so the your geographic location the sites you visit what you click on in each site etc 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 so facebook google they want all the data about you and they will find a way to get it out of you the person links a facebook account so now you've got a one one login one platform this is 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 putting yourself in a bigger compromise because one authentication means a bigger breach a bigger compromise so and the policies if you go into facebook also they don't honor do not track policy so the trackers are on all the time from the cookies to the javascript to the images to the iframes and uh, a person should be very weary likewise a person wants to be in stealth mode and they opt for cryptocurrency as a payment so with all these trackers from these different platforms you may not be anonymous so if we go to the origin of a bitcoin and uh, the the computational formula which a coin becomes existent and the miners and the process behind it and the algorithms the one who released the coin you'll find that there's a cryptographic signature which makes it original which makes it unique but transactions could be tracked to the signature so firstly a person needs to be very careful when they secure the coin so anonymity from your email address anonymity from the wallet that you are using anonymity from the the different networks that you using so uh, remember it still can be tracked depending on the surveillance factors which reveals a person's identity so when buying there's a track when selling there's a track if when buying there's no track and when selling there's no track then the the unique identity will be there but they would not able to to identify who's behind it so again your yeah, tracking mechanisms where people perceive that they are of the system of the radar but it is not like that so part of uh, bitcoin anonymity is something called a tumbler and there's different forms of tumblers 
where this cryptographic signature becomes anonymous so it's like a mixing service where it taints the source and the trail to the origin so whether there's a pooling of source of funds from different random sources and uh, eventually what happens is that uh, this ledger of transaction becomes uh, anonymous so you get peer-to-peer -peer tumblers so bitcoin users get together and uh, participants together mixes the server mixes it and you you you, you cannot identify who's behind it then you get privacy wallets where a person can exchange his bitcoin and it cannot be traced so uh, this is called coin joint transactions there's no central server uh, there's no mixing servers etc so what a person has to do is that these bitcoins needs to be stored as well so a, a anonymous bitcoin wallet is important don't store it online don't store it on your laptop don't store it on your phone you have one separate it's called cold storage where you only access it when you need it it's like putting your your, your money in a safe which nobody knows about so you have to be very careful about that careful about the exchange as many people leave their coins in the exchange it goes past they find reasons to snatch your coins they get hacked in people have lost a lot of uh, money in that way so when you do a transaction then from the blockchain you have an IP address so that IP address generally is masked where they cannot link the coin to a person so simple things out there can compromise a person so John McAfee who developed a antivirus software so he developed it he sold his company and uh, he moved to uh, a private asset so he was busy with a lot of things and 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 blogging but uh, he became a fugitive he was wanted they couldn't trace him except for one photo which was taken so a magazine article which was published uh, in December 2012 so the publisher took a picture of him standing next to McAfee in a tropical location that was it and he posted it on Twitter so what he did was must remember every photo has a image file X, exif file data file what we call it metadata and it contains a lot of information so the geolocation it will contain the details of the camera that was used the date the time when the picture was taken the make the model number of the phone the camera the longitude the latitude location etc everything is in the metadata so uh, and uh, in that metadata it showed that he was in Guatemala so police detained him and uh, he went through a lot of difficulties at that point in time so a simple photo there was a drug lord who escaped from a mexican prison two months after his escape police weren't successful but his son just posted an image of them on a dinner table obviously the father's image was obscured but the police were monitoring the sons uh, they were monitoring him so 
that image had the the location because the sun didn't switch off the auto tagging function on Twitter on the smartphone app and he was arrested so researchers have taken pictures of people uh, on uh, on a street at a university and uh, they found that they matched it so you could be walking on a street in a crowd but you you, you are compromised and uh, they found that most of the photos match that which are on Facebook. So even not even having the government data and, 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 and information databases, they could already automatically focus a camera on a street and every person that's passing identify full details of that person that they were passing at that time. So Google, Apple have facial recognition technology built in the applications. Google Photo, iPhoto, etc. So these platforms already are, are collecting data. So sometimes a person's got a Google Photo app and they, they delete it, but uh, the images are still there. It's on a cloud. So whatever you've deleted is not gone. So read the terms of the uh, and 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 uh, conditions, and and you will find out that uh, the Dave Dave engineered it let's just take one example if you go through the Facebook terms they say for content that is covered by intellectual property rights like photos and videos you specifically give us the following permission subject to your privacy and application settings you grant us a non-exclusive transferable sub licensable royalty free worldwide license to use any IP content that you post on or in connection with Facebook. So if you're in the US then uh, this is violation of the fourth amendment right. So by you just getting a sample f cell phone and being on these platforms you've compromised yourself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect one in all the amal for today is to be very particular with salat with the jama'at in the masjid. Inna Allah tabarak wa ta'ala la ya'ajabu min as-salati fil jam'i. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most pleased for that salat that musalli who reads salat with congregation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most happiest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as pleasure so we are seeking Allah subhanahu pleasure and it is in salat with jama'ah wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen